guys, this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doodle. Welcome back to my channel. So I'm here with um, a completely different idea. Now I have to say, I have not tried this, so it might be a um, disaster. But yep, I thought let's come along and do a completely different um, idea for doing collage um, sheets. Like I say, I haven't actually done a um, you know, a prototype of this or anything, and I probably should have done, but hey, let's just, you know, let's just see what we can come up with. So, obviously, if I do collage sheets normally, I mean, I tend to just kind of tear them. I mean, here's one that I'm kind of partially through. And, I mean, I'm really boring because I always stick with only a few different papers. I don't tend to be too kind of mixy-mixy, um, you know, just because I'm rubbish at doing that, really. Um, so I thought let's have a look and do something a little bit different with our scraps today. So it's all about kind of using up, you know, using up scraps, which I'm sure that I'm not alone in having absolutely tons of them. Now, the other thing that I tend to get a lot of, um, unfortunately is kind of misprints. And when I say misprints, I mean, you know, like when your printer is, um, you know, playing up when it's running out of ink or anything like that. I mean, sometimes the printer still carries on printing for, say, three or four sheets. And the printer's in my craft room. You know, I maybe am downstairs and I send the things to print. And I don't realise that it's still printing when it's actually kind of low on ink. And so what happens is I get these, like, bizarre coloured, um, you know, sheets that then I don't necessarily want to use. So some of that is, you know, my, my misprints. So, you know, here, for example, I've got a couple of, you know, different bits and pieces. Um, and then obviously the other thing is, of course, you know, I'm printing out tons and tons of things for, you know, when I'm making printables and things. So, I mean, I end up with generally just a lot of paper scraps, really. Um, and yeah, I just thought let's come and, you know, use up some of those scraps. So to do a different concept of collage. Now, what I've got here, I've got my square punch. Now, unfortunately, I have only got a three inch punch. I'm sure I did used to have a two inch punch. Um, but I don't appear to have one now. I can't help but think a two inch would probably be better for this, but I'm going to just, you know, wing and a prayer stuff, go with the three inch. Um, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to make my collage from squares, almost like a sort of quilting, um, you know, effect. So I'm thinking, you know, if I fold this over, I probably, hopefully, hopefully, we'll get two, yeah, two three inch squares from there. So I'm just going to punch a bunch of squares from my, you know, my paper scraps. Um, and I'm going to try my very best, try my very best, not to get too hung up on, you know, what papers I'm using, because I would really like to be, you know, quite eclectic in, you know, the styles and things. Um, I don't know whether I'm going to achieve this because, to be honest, you know, matchy matchy, that is a bit of a problem of mine. So <clears throat> we'll just see, see how it goes. So I hope I haven't put too many sheets through here. Oops, that's pretty tough to get through. Oh, I have to use all my strength for that one. Um, okay, so yep, just kind of punching out some squares. So, I mean, I said that I'm not going to be too. Um, what's the word, you know, focused on what I'm using, but of course, you know, I can't help but get a little bit kind of hung up on, it must match a little bit. So yeah, I'm just kind of taking down some of these little scraps. So, so far I've used the William Morris and um, this is my French collection of papers. So, and these are just, you know, the, the scraps that I've happened to have at the moment. Oh my goodness. Right. And you might prefer to not try and, you know, oops, not try and overdo your punching because it's actually pretty tough to do. But hey, <clears throat> oh my goodness. Yep, not making a great job of this. Now, I mean, I'm using, this is, you know, A4, oops, A4 page, three inch punch. There probably is, you know, a way that I would be able to be really efficient and get like a precise amount of squares from this. Like I said, I've only just kind of thought of this really this morning and I was then excited to come along and do it. Oops. Excited to come along and do it. I haven't done any prototypes or anything like that. And maybe if I'd given it a bit more thought, I would have come up with a better way to, you know, be more efficient. But that being said, 
oops it's not like I'm short of scraps so I just, you know I don't really need to be trying to prolong or you know make more make more of my scraps because let's be honest I'm doing this because I've you know I'm kind of drowning in them anyway so I've got this one so yeah I'm going to mix up I think some of these um you know blues with these beige type colors so we'll just see see how it goes okay so just folding this like concertina fold and then just again put it into my punch whoops Sorry, I realise this is kind of off camera now, but I'm having to, you know, balance it against my my body to be able to oops, feed the paper in. There we go. And then, yeah. Oh, my goodness. I mean, to be honest, just these squares are turning out absolutely gorgeous. So, I mean, I hate, oops, I hate this is going to look good. I don't know, like I say. And if you haven't got a square punch, oops then you could always use a, um, you know, a die cut machine. Or of course, you know, if you're a more precise person than I am, I mean, I would struggle personally to use like say a paper trimmer and a ruler and try and kind of measure it out. I would not make a good job of that. Um, you know, because that's just not, yeah, not an area that I'm very gifted, <laughs> gifted at. Oh my goodness, I've really mucked this one up, I think. Um, you know, so yeah, I would kind of struggle to be precise and get the same size squares. And because I'm going to try and do this, you know, a bit patchworky, I may need all the same size squares. Again, I must reiterate, I have not done a prototype of this. I don't know whether it's going to actually require exact same size squares. I don't know at this point whether I'm going to kind of overlap the squares or whether we're going to just oh my goodness <laughs> oh this is so tough right I don't know whether we're going to be overlapping the squares or whether we're going to be kind of um you know putting them kind of next to each other with a space I don't know um we're just going to kind of suck it and see really and see you know see what we get so I've punched out quite a few squares I don't know how many you'd need for a page let me just have a sip of my tea Okay, right. So what we will do is take one of these sheets. Now, I'm wondering if we wanted to have, say, you know, the collage pieces with spaces like this, <clears throat> you know, in which case you may want to have like a coloured background like we've got here or do we want to butt them up against each other you know leaving no no space between I had originally thought definitely leaving the space but actually I'm now kind of thinking actually I think probably I prefer them yeah I think probably I prefer them being squished up yeah probably prefer them being squished up so yeah let's kind of get just making um and sticking some down now I'm going to just use this um piece here I think so probably better to use it on the paler side just in case that red th you know shows through so I'm just going to use my wet glue and yeah just going to go around the edges of the squares and then a little bit in the middle like that so I'm going to butt them up against each other like this so now I will use my you know glue spreader to just ensure that you know they're sticking down right to the edges so like that okay so yeah I mean I don't know really whether they're going to end up overlapping a little bit but, you know, we're just going to, yeah, we're just going to trial and error this. So we'll hope for the best. <clears throat> okay. But I just thought this would be a really fun way to use scraps and a totally different way to do collage. Um, you know, a way that I hadn't done a collage before. And I'm not saying it's a new, new thing, but definitely this is not something I've really seen being done before. 
um, and I just thought it would be, yeah, something a bit different, something a bit fun. And I just, yeah, felt quite excited to come along and, you know, give it a try really today. So, we just go like that, okay. So, like that. Okay. And I'm literally just going to fill in. I really don't want to get too kind of bogged down with trying to match up or anything like that, you know. I mean, obviously, I have used what I would consider, you know, complementary colours. I mean, I've just gone with, obviously, these shades of blues and a sort of beige colour. Um, so, I mean, you know, touch with this is going to look, you know, quite pretty anyway, because obviously I've not gone kind of wild with my colour choices. Um, but that being said, you know, I didn't want to get kind of too caught up in, you know, trying to match things up too much. So... Okay, I mean this one here, this is on my, um, oh, what's it called, Pink Perry I think it is, um, and it's the duck egg and pink sort of Paris-y type themed page, which to be honest, you know, could even kind of mix that in, but I think for the first one, you know, because I've never done this before, I just want to be, yeah, a little bit more boring and kind of go with safer options so touch wood safer options you know and then who knows I mean if this turns out you know successful then maybe this will be something we could come back and do some other looks you know mixing up completely all the colors and um, papers and things like that but I think just for now I'm probably better off just playing it safe and kind of just yeah going with things that I think you know, will definitely complement each other. So, like that. And, you know, who knows? I mean, maybe this might be a quite a good way to begin collage. You know, if you're, like, new to collage, maybe this would be a good kind of, um, you know, beginner's way in because you're not having to worry about, you know, filling in spaces or, you know, overlaps and things like that. And you're not having to... Um, what's the word? What's the word? You know, judge kind of how big your pieces is, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure whether that's quite the quite the explanation really that I was looking for. But you know, I think with collage, I mean, definitely, you know, I'm no collage expert at all, and still find, you know, it's not really something that comes that naturally to me. And like I say, I mean, I'm pretty basic in that, you know. I only tend to use a handful of different papers and, um, you know, I don't kind of get really into it, kind of mixing up all different things. Um, you know, other people I think are quite adventurous with their collage and I'm not particularly adventurous with mine. Um, but I know that, you know, still now, I often struggle where I've got maybe pieces that are too big and then, of course, you know, when you would then come to use those, you know, collage pieces, if you cut it down, if you've got kind of like really massive pieces, you might then only have like one piece practically showing on a pocket, if you see what I mean. And then, you know, you've effectively not really got a collage piece at all. Have you? So, you know, there's things like that, I suppose, to consider, um, you know, which I'm not saying takes practice because... Like I said, I still very much feel like I'm learning, you know, and I would hate to think that people are thinking that I'm trying to claim, you know, some sort of expert knowledge because I'm definitely, definitely still in the learning processes of, you know, doing collage. But this, I think, just takes a lot of that out of it because, you know, we're not overlapping. We're not, you know, we're not worrying whether we've got the right size pieces. We're using uniform pieces that are the same size. And we are, you know, just kind of butting them up against each other. So they are, you know, we've got no kind of thought process needed as to, oh, shall I over that, that piece? Oh, is that piece too big? Or, you know, none of that's going on because they're all the same size pieces. I mean, I am still being quite basic in that, you know, I've still gone with a colour palette that, you know, I feel kind of complements 
the other pieces i haven't kind of gone really wild and picked like an eclectic bunch of stuff um but yeah i think this is quite a nice way to to do a sort of collage maybe you know especially if you've not really done a collage before then maybe this would be a helpful process i don't know let me know below what you think now i have to say this is a bit of a problem now i'm not sure whether i'm gluing these on a bit wonky which let's face it i would not be surprised um or whether you know when i punched out the squares there were maybe some folds of the paper that weren't quite you know big enough for the square punch if you see what i mean because i'm just going to bring this up to the camera so as you can see can you see what's happening at the bottom i'm just developing this space down the bottom I mean, again, I'm not troubled by that because obviously, you know, we can fill that in kind of afterwards. I don't think it's going to be, you know, an issue or anything like that. But I guess it's just things like that to be a little bit aware of. And that's where definitely, I mean, if I had used a paper trimmer, you know, like I said, I mean, this is bad enough using a punch. I've still managed to go wonky, you know, and off skew if. Imagine if I'd just cut these with a paper trimmer. Oh my goodness. They would not resemble the same size pieces at all they would be literally all over the place so yeah definitely definitely um you know for me the punch is best and like i said i mean actually in an ideal world i thought probably a two inch punch would have been better um but that being said actually these three inch squares are looking smaller than i expected so to be honest, maybe a two inch punch would have been too small. Who knows? So, um, yeah, you know, again, definitely worth kind of playing around and seeing what you think. But, you know, sometimes it's the things that you don't think, i.e., you know, I thought this would be too small. Actually, I think this is probably working out for the best, to be honest. And I think uh, too big. These are actually, I think, working out for the best. And I think maybe a two inch would have been way too tiny i'm just going to have a quick sip of my tea okay right, let's get a bit more of this duck egg color oh, i'm so sorry if you can hear my daughter she's home from school again today she has got um sore throat and a well she's lost her voice really um i mean that said she's not lost it completely but yeah and she's just got this really awful cough and I mean to be fair to her she has got you know it is a really bad cough so to be honest I just thought I'd best not really send her in because um you know I mean I'm sure she's fine but a she feels a bit self-conscious and b you know since the whole covid thing I think people do not really like people being around them if they're coughing do they so yeah I thought I'd best keep her home really so here I'm up like at the edge of the page. So I'm just going to kind of like glue half the piece and then, you know, put the rest of the glue onto the, the piece of paper, if you see what I mean. Now I can see, actually, I have gone slanted at the top. So it's running off at the top. That's, you know, that's where I've gone wrong. If you see what I mean, you know, for that line at the bottom that I said, oh, that's like going really wonky. I can see now, you know, where that is. But, you know, I don't think it's a problem. It's all fine. It's, you know, it's still looking okay. So again, just go down there. Put this one on like that. Oh, this is really actually an enjoyable thing to do. Um, yeah, it's actually really quite a fun, a fun process. So, um, yeah, if nothing else, you know, I think you'd enjoy the process because it is quite relaxing feel quite relaxed I feel like it's quite therapeutic doing this so yeah maybe it's a nice way to just you know spend an afternoon anyway is you know get a bunch of scraps if you've got your scraps in a kind of big scraps box or anything just get out a bunch of scraps and then just literally you know punch a bunch punch, punch a bunch <laughs> yeah punch a bunch out with your um square punch and then just you know compile your Oh, that's a shame, isn't it? Because I could have had those little stamped pieces. Oh, that's so annoying because actually that was probably my favourite piece that I was kind of dying to use. And now, of course, I've not 
actually ended up using it at all. Oh well. Right, let's just put this one in down here. So just go around the around the edge like that. Okay. Oops. Oops, oops, oops. Okay, so pop that one down there. Right. Again, just spread that glue out. So that's my collage sheet. Now obviously I need to just trim it up, you know, around the edges, but super super simple and I mean I actually really love how that looks so I'm going to put that to one side let's do another one and let's try and be a bit adventurous shall we and um, mix it up like I say that's you know that's going to be a stretch for me because I'm not very good at mixing um, you know different colours and things but hey let's let's be adventurous so I'm going to take this lovely green um, which again this is from my French collection and now I actually can't remember whether this made it into the actual finished French collection or not so I do apologize um you know for not being able to remember there whether it you know whether this made the final cut or not but anyway isn't it gorgeous colors so yeah really really love it so again just take my square punch okay So, and obviously I've got the leftover bits from the other one, you know, from the one we just, oops, just did. So we'll be mixing up the colours a little bit with those. So I just want to get just a handful of other pieces here. So I've got a brown, brown sheet. So let's, yeah, let's include that. So, I mean, you can probably see I'm actually getting through the scraps really quickly. Um, you know, because obviously to get those um you know three squares if you see what I mean which I think we folded it over four times so yeah 12 12 squares but you know the three oops, the three squares like from you know along the punch if you see what I mean um it's using up a whole sheet of paper so this is a brilliant way oops to quite quickly use up you know, if you've got kind of misprints and things like that, or just over, over spills, you know, from like if you've used a kit and you finish the journal, but you've got some pages left over that you think, oh, well, you know, they're not going to necessarily go with something else I'm creating. Then this might be quite a nice way to just use up, you know, some of those bits. So, yeah, I think they're quite a good one, you know, generally. And obviously, you you know, you don't have to use full sheets like I'm using here. Just going to quickly finish my tea. You don't have to use um, full sheets like I have been using. It just happens that I've, you know, that I, oops, I had full sheets here. Um, but of course, you could use your scraps more you know, rather than the full sheets. So let's see if I can try and be a bit better on this one. I doubt I can. I probably will still go slanty or, you know, skew if. But I'll try and concentrate a little bit better. I, I don't think it was because I wasn't concentrating in fairness. I think just I'm not very good at sort of lining things up. So, um, yeah, hence, hence junk journals are definitely the way to go for me because I can just get away with so much so much more than I could with something that requires a bit more precision and you can probably see why I'm not a quilter from doing this because my quilts would be literally all over the place which would not be good okay yeah this is a really um relaxing thing to do so uh yeah I think it's it's a nice thing to do regardless you know I think it's um it's quite enjoyable so yeah, if you make some of these, you know, I'd love to see your results. Maybe share them on Instagram or on the Facebook group. And, <clears throat> you know, um, yeah, perhaps we could do a, uh, you know, a hashtag. I'm just thinking um, what we could do as a hashtag. Because I know that Marta over at Marami Small Art, she's done collage in tiles before. Um, which now I'm thinking, oh, is that quite similar to this? kind of probably is a little bit similar to this but I don't 
I don't feel like it was quite quite similar, if you see what I mean. She wasn't making like these masterboards from identical squares. She was kind of doing all over. Um, I don't know. Perhaps we could do like a hashtag saying something like, you know, oh, I don't know. Um, square collage or something. Hashtag square collage. Perhaps. Or quilt. Collage quilt. I don't know. I'll have to have a look because there may be, you know, like if I try and pick a hashtag. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't really know how hashtags work, but there could be already a hashtag in place. Like collage quilt. Mm, that sounds like something that could already exist, doesn't it? So I don't want to kind of pick something that then, you know, merges in and kind of we end up getting lost perhaps with some other projects. So, yeah, we'll have to kind of just have a look, but... Yeah, maybe, um, I don't know, hashtag collage quilt, hashtag collage squares, or hashtag paper quilt, paper quilt maybe, something like that. Because this is how this feels a little bit to me, like it's a bit of a sort of collaged quilt, you know, paper, paper quilt. So there we go, just pop that down. <clears throat> Oops. I've not obviously been so good with the glue on this one because I keep on, you know, knocking the glue up. Knocking the glue up? Yeah, kind of like, you know. When I'm spreading the glue on another piece, it's kind of pulling corners up on another square, if you see what I mean. So you need to be a little bit careful because I have obviously not done a good job of gluing. Okay. Okie dokie. Put this one. And I mean, it's got to be said at this point in time, I've got no clue, you know, what I'm going to do with these. So, yeah, I've got to be completely truthful. I mean, I'm assuming that I'm just going to use these as I would a regular masterboard, um, you know, a regular collage masterboard that we've made you know, previously. So yeah, I don't see why I wouldn't use it in exactly the same way that we've used previous, previous collage masterboards, but I haven't kind of like got that far with my plan so far. You know, it just suddenly I was just making my breakfast and I thought, oh, wonder if we could do that. And, um, you know, I was just kind of like thinking of things we could do to use up paper scraps and things. And I thought, oh, this might be a really fun thing to do but like I say I haven't actually then kind of delved further with my thoughts so <laughs> they just they just got stuck at the collage part and yep that's where they've stayed so far so one thing at a time but yeah I'm loving how they look now it is a little bit soggy obviously from the glue um so, I mean, I guess that's something else to be a little bit aware of is, you know, depending on the glue that you use, they may be a bit soggy. If it gets too kind of like wrinkly and soggy, I mean, you could always iron it and that would help it a little bit, I think. So, you know, I might just do that as well. So we'll kind of see how it goes, but hopefully it won't be too, 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 too terrible. That's quite nice up there. Okay. I'm actually quite excited to get this one finished and then pull them both in and see which one I like best. So, I mean, I love this colour green. It's such a gorgeous colour, isn't it? Absolutely love, love, love that colour. Oh my goodness, I can't see whether that's up the right way or the wrong way. Uh, I mean, it probably doesn't matter, to be honest, but I guess probably try and get it the right way up. Okay. I mean, it doesn't matter, to be honest, because, you know, when you use these, you might even use them sideways on as kind of um, pockets and things like that anyway. So I'm sure it really doesn't matter at all. Okay. 
Do you see how easy it is to go into that overthinking? Because straight away, I then thought, oh, let's see how it looks against the green. And, you know, that's how it all starts, isn't it? <clears throat> you know, the procrastination of, you know, oh, where should I put that piece? You know, it's very easy to go into that. Very, very easy. I mean, this is probably a little bit of a different project for me anyway, because... Um, you know, if you watch my channel, you'll know that, you know, I generally don't really work with straight lines. So for me, this kind of feels a little bit weird because generally, obviously, you know, like I showed just now with my collage mask boards, they're normally torn pieces of paper. So this is kind of like quite not outside of my comfort zone, but yeah, a little bit outside of my comfort zone, if I'm truthful. So definitely it's a very different kind of style um, for me. So yeah, I think, um, you know, it's definitely kind of pushing me outside of my boundaries. But yeah, a little bit pushing me outside of my boundaries. It would have been pushing me right outside had I've used a paper trimmer. Oh my goodness. It would have been like outside of my boundaries and literally probably not able to find my way back in. Yeah, that would have been a nightmare. So, um, yes, I think this is quite enough, quite enough of a pushing of the boundaries at the moment okay oops oh i forgot that i've yeah i've got those bits of william morris stuff as well so oh well let's just pop these on sam yeah i mean i think you really could go to town and you know do these with a lot of different papers and get some really gorgeous looks I mean, to be honest, until we come to cut this up and actually use it, you know, I won't know, I suppose, how much I love these, but hopefully they're going to look really nice, you know. Just wondering whether I want to have this one there. I know I've gone into like overthinking mode again, but I'm probably not. Right, just to use that one. Oops. Okay. And then, yep, let's get some green going down that edge. Oh my goodness, I mean, that's such a gorgeous colour green, isn't it? Absolutely love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so again, just, you know, kind of like going down that edge of that paper because this is obviously the overhang. So I just need to be a little bit, oops, a little bit mindful of that. Oops, there we go. Okay, and yep. Well, perhaps I'll just put that one in upside down, to be honest. I mean, I know, you know, I did just say, oh, it doesn't matter. It feels a bit weird putting it deliberately upside down, but I'm sure it doesn't really matter. So, there we go. Right. Right. Okay, right, we are nearly done with this, nearly done. So, yeah, perhaps I'll just do that, unless I might prefer, or maybe I prefer this piece. So, yeah, really does not matter. I must not go into full-blown overthinking. There we go, okay. Like that. Okay, and then just this section there okay right we are nearly done now there we go right let's now trim them down oops trim them down on the edges and see how they look so yep i mean to be honest you know a lot of this is as you know is the same papers that we used just now because obviously i was using the leftovers but just that addition of the green, it really has kind of changed it completely, hasn't it? So I'm just going to take this down now, you know, where we've got the overhang. So there's a natural overhang obviously here, you know, just where the squares are kind of like too big to fit snugly. So like that, okay. And then just trim down on this edge, like that. Oh my goodness, I love how that looks. 
Isn't that so gorgeous? I've made a terrible job of cutting at the top. Sorry about this. Oh, look. I hadn't made a terrible job. It was um, bits that got stuck from my scissors, although I have made a not great job there. But anyway, so that's how that one looks. Isn't that just so lovely? Absolutely love it. Let's just quickly trim down the, whoops, the green one. Uh, for some reason, I don't seem to have, oh, I have got an overhang for a minute. I thought, well, that's weird. I haven't got such an overhang. I have, but it's just, I think I've got it at the top and the bottom, which is a bit annoying. Don't know quite what happened with this one, but anyway. So just trim it along and then just trim it on the off on the edge okay oh my goodness I mean look at this okay right let's have a look so and that's that one so yep let's pull them both in together and see oh I don't know which one I prefer now I like them both to be honest so yeah and then I mean I guess you could run it through your sewing machine you could kind of like you know zigzag some bits and things like that um I don't know whether I'm definitely going to do that um I mean you probably can see I mean I've almost got like sort of six squares um per quarter this is you know more like kind of four and a half I suppose um but yeah so you kind of have like yeah almost like an obvious point where you would cut that down um yeah I mean I quite like those to be honest they are quite nice aren't they and I mean you could obviously you know use this as a page in in a journal as well or a cover or something like that you have got an obvious line where it's you know wanting to fold um you know just because your joins are all in the same place if that makes sense so yeah you'd have to kind of play it by ear and be a little bit careful but definitely it's you know it's looking quite pretty and then you know of course you could just kind of add like some little bits you could add some bits of lace and things like that to your board just see if I've got any kind of smaller bits I've got oops let me just get this sorry it's getting this bit of lace here oh Sorry, it's it's bound up and, oh my goodness, trying to pull off the thing and get to the end. There we go. So, you know, you could just add a little bit of lace, maybe stitch it on and things like that, you know, and then trim them down. And then I think just looks really, really, really pretty, to be honest. Um, so that's, yeah, that's that one. And then, you know, could just kind of have like some little bits of lace and things like that on there. So, yeah, I may take this, I think, to the sewing machine. So I might just add a couple of bits of lace and then take it to the sewing machine and then perhaps we'll come back and make some pockets and things. So, yeah, I hope that you like them. Hopefully it's given you some inspiration of ways to use up your scraps. I will try and come up with a hashtag to do like a, um, you know, hashtag square quilt or paper quilt or something like that. Um, and yeah, do let me see your um, attempts at this. I really hope that you like them. I just think it's a really super fun way to collage. And, you know, like I said, great for if you're just starting out with collage and things like that, because you really don't have to worry at all about your paper sizing or overlapping and all of that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, hope you like them. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks then. Bye.